We begin the August 16th turn and the 7 a.m. phase. The RAF will stand down at Hornchurch. The expectation is that the Germans will be targeting the undamaged coastal targets and will be up in force this day. And, as expected, the Germans make an appearance with a four-plane raid. However, since we have two London hexes damaged, we increase that number by one, making this attack a five-plane raid instead. We roll for the raid placement and for the reported altitude, which is 20,000 feet. The RAF will remain at Hornchurch and will only scramble if the raid moves further inland. The German raid makes its move and, as expected, makes for the coastal port of Dover. The raid is revealed and is made up of two fighters and three medium bombers. We roll for the true altitude and a six sends the even-numbered escorts up one level with the rest of the raid remaining in Angels 20. Dover has a heavy anti-aircraft icon so one point of bomb damage is removed, and the port takes a total of four points of damage. The Germans score two more victory points for a total of nine, and the raid returns to France undamaged. We proceed to the 10 a.m. phase. We'll have the RAF patrolling over Dunkirk radar at Angels 20 in anticipation of the next raid. And, as expected, the Germans make another appearance with a five-plane raid, which is increased to six due to the damage to London. We roll for the raid placement and the reported altitude, which is 15,000 feet. The RAF will move south to Hex E4, remaining at Angels 20, and await the Germans' next move. And the raid makes its way near the emergency field at Limp, the RAF remain in their current location, up sun, and await the raid's next move. We're going to need accurate intelligence on this raid in order to attack it with an advantage, so we'll wait for the raid to bomb a target, unless that target is London once again. The Germans take their turn, but the raid skirts Limp Airfield and proceeds further inland. The RAF remain at Angel 20 and parallel the raid's course. The Germans take their turn and once again arrive over West Malling Airfield. The raid is now revealed and is heavily escorted with five fighters and one medium bomber. We roll for the true altitude and an 11 moves the entire raid up one level to 20,000 feet with no fighters flying top cover. West Malling only has light anti-aircraft, so the airfield takes the full two points of damage from the lone HE-111. With another airfield damaged, the German victory points increase to 11. The RAF cannot effectively attack this raid. With so many German fighters present, the British would most likely be overwhelmed in combat and suffer losses that cannot be replaced. Therefore, the RAF make their way to Hornchurch, while the Germans make their way back to France. The upside is that the raid only caused relatively minor damage, but the RAF desperately need to return the favor and start doing damage to German raids. We begin the 2 p.m. phase, and the RAF will be in the air once again over Dunkirk radar at Angels 20. Both RAF pilots incur more fatigue, with stones approaching the critical range, but we have to push our pilots a little harder at this point if we're going to keep pace with the Germans. And our persistence pays off as the Germans mount another raid, but it's a big one, with a total of seven raiders approaching the coast. We roll for raid placement and for the reported altitude, which is 15,000 feet. The RAF moves south to Hex E5, remaining at Angels 20, and the raid makes its way to Hawking Airfield. The raid is revealed and consists of four medium bombers and three 109s, 
one of which is an ace. We roll for the true altitude, and a roll of five keeps the entire raid at 15,000 feet. Hawking has heavy anti-aircraft, so we remove one point of bomb damage for a final total of six points. With that, the Germans score two more victory points for a total of 13. The German raid is huge, but the RAF have no option at this point but to attack. The Germans have a slight edge in defending fighters, but nothing the RAF can't handle if the die roll in their favor. The RAF remain at Angel 20 and jump the raid from out of the sun. Stone will go after the 109 ace pilot, while Homewood jumps another 109. We roll for the Hurricane's performance check first, and it's not enough, even with the Out of the Sun bonus. With the plus two added to Holmwood's performance check of eight, the final score of 10 matches the 109's performance of the same number. Therefore, Holmwood cannot fire. We now roll for Stone's performance check, and it's another busted intercept with the final values being 10 for the Spitfire and 13 for the 109 Ace, and Stone fails to get into position. The German fighters now choose their targets for attack. Two of the 109s go after the Spitfire, while the third attacks the Hurricane. We roll for performance check for the 109 Ace first, and the Ace comes out on top with a roll of 10 while Stone rolls a 7. The 109 is allowed three bursts at the Spitfire and scores four out of six hits. And Stone is killed as his fighter is shot to pieces. We place the destroyed Spitfire in the destroyed box and the Germans gain another victory point. We roll for a Homewood's performance check and the 109 easily bests the Hurricane. The 109 scores a 12, while Homewood scores an 8. The 109 fires three bursts. And the Hurricane's frame is riddled with bullets, destroying the fighter. The Germans score another victory point, and we place the doomed Hurricane in the destroyed box. Fortunately, Homewood is not wounded by the 109, so we roll for bailout success. And a roll of two means Homewood escapes unhurt. With the RAF dealt with, the German raid flies back to France. Homewood parachutes near the smoldering airfield and begins the long trek back to Hornchurch. The 5 p.m. phase begins. The Germans mount one more daylight raid, consisting of four raiders, which is increased to five due to London damage. The RAF has been effectively neutralized and cannot mount an attack against this raid. We roll for raid placement and the reported altitude, which is 10,000 feet. We proceed with the German movement phases. and Thameshaven is the target. The raid is revealed and consists of three medium bombers and two dive bombers. Thameshaven has a heavy anti-aircraft icon and will subtract one point of total bomb damage, but has no barrage balloons, so both German dive bombers drop to 5,000 feet where their bombs will cause double damage and blast the target with four hits. The medium bombers follow up and cause four more hits, the fifth hit being removed due to the heavy anti-aircraft, and Thameshaven suffers a total of eight hits. Thameshaven has been bombed, so the London's burning tracker increases to three. 
and the Germans also increased their victory points to 17. We begin the night phase. Holmwood makes his way back to Hornchurch, but does not recover fatigue and currently sits at fatigue level 2. At the moment, Holmwood has no hurricane to fly, so the RAF spend one repair point to replace the destroyed fighter. There is no need to repair the Spitfire, as our upcoming reserve pilot will be flying a hurricane. So, we'll use the last repair point to lower West Malling Airfield's damage to one. The Luftwaffe took no losses today, so does not need to use their two repair points. It was a black day for the RAF. In fact, the game seems to be a lost cause, and a potential German victory looms large. The British still have the ability to put up a fight, but only just. Winston Churchill's famous quote, We will never surrender, rings loud at this point. But the RAF will fight to the bitter end, even if the outcome seems inevitable. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again soon.